Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we were introduced to the formal grammars. From this session onwards, we will observe the classifications of it. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of this session, today, we will observe the first two types, that is, type 0 and type 1 formal grammars. Basically, in this session and in the next session as well, we will learn how the different types of formal grammars were derived. Before diving straight to the classifications, let's revisit the formal definition of the grammar. So, according to Noam Chomsky, a phrase structure grammar, that is a grammar which has the ability to generate, is defined by four tuples, N, T, P and S. Where N is a finite non-empty set of non-terminals or variables, T is a finite non-empty set of terminals or constants. Now, since N and T are two disjoint sets, hence, N intersection T is phi. Coming to S, it is a spatial non-terminal called the start symbol. Basically, the derivation of the outcome, that is the string of terminals, is initiated from this specific non-terminal. And the derivation is done using P, which is a finite set of production rules of the form, alpha can be rewritten as beta. P happens to be the most essential tuple of any grammar. Now, let's move on to the classifications. The first category is called type 0. If you remember, in the previous session we learned that the alpha and beta of a production rule can be any string over n union t. Now, n union t is generally denoted using v. Therefore, v clean star closure is clean star closure of n union t. Any string over n union t is basically denoted by v star. Now, during the previous session, we also observed that non-terminals can generate both non-terminals and terminals. That is, without a non-terminal, the derivation process cannot progress. So, if we become a little specific, alpha can be rewritten as beta should be rephrased as v star n v star can be rewritten as v star, where alpha belongs to v star n v star and beta belongs to v star only. Now, why we are stating it like this? Think about it. v star means any string over n union t, that is, from V star, we can generate epsilon, that is nothing, or only non-terminals, or only terminals, or a mixture of both non-terminals and terminals. Additionally, in order to generate something, we must have at least one non-terminal in the left-hand side of the production rule. So, we are enforcing at least one non-terminal in the left-hand side of the production rule, placing this N in between two V stars. Consider the following example. Say, we have a type 0 grammar G, which has defined the production rule P as follows. Lowercase a b, uppercase a b, lowercase c d e can be rewritten as lowercase a b, uppercase x and lowercase c d e. So, basically, uppercase a b is deriving uppercase x in association with the left context, that is lowercase a b and the right context, lowercase c, d, e. By the way, a mixed batch of terminals and non-terminals is called sentential form. And clearly, using uppercase alphabets, we specify the non-terminals, whereas using lowercase alphabets, we generally specify the terminals. Why am I using the term generally? Because apart from lowercase alphabets, terminals can also be any other symbol like plus, comma, parenthesis, etc. Observe carefully, in this particular production rule, alpha is having a mixed batch of seven elements, that is five terminals and two non-terminals. Now, the sentential form it is generating includes lesser number of elements. To be specific, six elements, five terminals, lowercase a, b and c, d, e, and one non-terminal, that is x. So, since here alpha can generate beta, which can even include lesser number of elements than alpha itself. By the way, here beta can also have more elements than alpha, 
Right now, we are specifically talking about this production rule. So basically, there is no restriction of any kind. Only requirement is that alpha must contain at least one non-terminal. This is why type 0 category is also known as unrestricted grammar. The next category is called the type 1 grammar. Now we just saw type 0's production structure and also learned that it has got no restriction even in generating sentential form having lesser number of elements. Well, this is problematic in terms of membership problem. If we want to check whether a particular string of terminals can be generated from a set of production rules like this one, the number of steps for derivation will be indefinite. We will observe the membership problem later on in details. For now, just remember that having no restriction on the production rules is not suitable all the time. So, in case of type 1, the production rules are of the form alpha a beta can be rewritten as alpha gamma beta, where a is a non terminal and alpha beta and gamma are any strings over n union t, that is, these belong to V star. Now, structure wise, it is as same as type 0. Let me illustrate. If we compare these two structures side by side, n is actually a in this case. Then the left context alpha and the right context beta are V star as described in here. And since alpha, beta, gamma all belong to V star, hence, V star on the right hand side of the production is represented as alpha, gamma, beta in here. Now, if these two are the same, then why we are calling it a different type? Well, that is because along with this newly specified structure of the production rule, the added restriction is mod of alpha, a, beta should be less than or equal to mod of alpha, gamma, beta. That is, the right hand side of the production should have at least same or more number of elements in it as compared to the left hand side of the production rule. And due to this restriction, type 1 is also called length increasing grammar. For an instance, consider the grammar having the production rule capital A small c can be rewritten as capital B followed by small b c c. Observe, the left hand side of the production has two elements whereas the right hand side has four. Now let me show you how this is similar to the production structure. If we consider the formal production structure, we will have to modify our production a bit, but don't worry, it will remain the same. If we write our example production like this, epsilon a c can be rewritten as epsilon b b c c, then these epsilons are actually the left contexts. Now, since alpha belongs to V star, it has the liberty to generate epsilon. And clearly, beta being the right context is generating the lowercase c. Now, the non terminal A is actually generating capital B followed by small b and c. Basically, capital A is deriving capital B, small b, small c. However, it can only derive this if the left context is small c. So, context has a strong impact in here. This is the reason why type 1 is called context sensitive grammar. So, in this session, we observed two different types of formal grammars, type 0 or unrestricted and type 1, that is the length increasing or context sensitive grammar. All right, people. That will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe the rest of the types of the formal grammars. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.